Today we want to talk about, we want to answer a question that we hear often. Yeah. What search engines should I be using as a mom and a career returner yes. to get back to work? Yes. It's a great question. It's a loaded question. Yes, it is. It is. And um, I think with all of the technology that's out there, mm -hmm. all of the different platforms, all of the different search mm -hmm. engines or, or it, even just the tools, the search tools. Which one is the best? Which one should I be using? Yeah. Um, and so we have a spin on yeah. what you should be using and how you should be using it. Well, let's it. just give a little education about the sites. Yep. Most of these are aggregate sites. Most of them have the same jobs. So years and years ago, if you're older, you might remember monster.com. That was kind of the original one. Mm -hmm. And that was really the only one. Now there are so many players in the space and companies are smart. They're not only posting their jobs on all of those sites, but they're also posting them on their own website. Mm -hmm. LinkedIn is now, and it may have already, about to eclipse Indeed as the biggest job board. So now you've got... LinkedIn, which used to be a social, more of a business networking site, yep. also now a job board, company websites, and all of these other aggregate job boards. So it can be a little overwhelming to figure out yeah. where should you look. Well, and one that we, you didn't mention was ones that are specifically targeted to people who have gaps. Yes, absolutely. To... The Mom Project, yep. Opera, that just do those kinds of jobs. Yep. Flex Jobs, which yep. does flexible jobs. And then there are others that are unique to certain disciplines right. for marketing professionals, for IT professionals. Mm -hmm. So. Let's talk about that in a second. What I want to first explain is that your chances of getting through a job algorithm you have to really listen to this are very, very slim. So depending on whose research you be, you believe, roughly 20% of Americans got their job by applying online. Right. Now, if you take out the jobs that are so easy to fill right. with just checks and, and checked boxes, like computer coders. Mm -hmm. I don't really need to know your personality if you're just going to be writing code for me. I need to know that you know these languages and you've got these certifications. That's an easy job for me to fill through a through a job board. But basically everything else is really hard to fill. Right. So 20% and even less if you don't fall into an easily quantifiable right. job and even less if your resume is unconventional, which yours are, which mm -hmm. ours were. Mm -hmm. So job hops, frequent moves, unconventional jobs that don't make sense, career breaks. Those are all the reasons you will never get through an algorithm or a job board. And here's another thing that has started to happen is there are resume writers that are out there or mm -hmm. companies that are like, well, we'll load you up with keywords That's right. in your resume that will get you discoverable on these platforms. And we really caution you against that and falling into that arena with people that are looking to Well, do for that a couple because, of reasons. Yes, yeah. One is you can only have one LinkedIn and your LinkedIn has to be consistent with your resume. We've known people, they saw something different on both because it makes, it begs the question, well, which one are you? Yes. It also shows a recruiter or a hiring manager that you're just writing what you think they want to right. hear in the resume because you can't change your, res your LinkedIn for every resume you send out. Right. So that's just the basics, right? So it's important to understand that when you load something up with keywords, right. often it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It may get you through an algorithm, but the minute they look at the resume, a human looks at the resume, they're going to see it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And the minute they look up your LinkedIn, they're going to see they're not in sync. Yes. Right? So that's just not the way to go. Yes. We All just right. have to caution you against that mm -hmm. because there's a lot of talk out there and people really mm -hmm. feel hot to do that. We are talking to this lane. We are talking to this mm -hmm. audience. Your resume is an unconventional resume that we know and understand really, really well. Mm -hmm. And that is not for you. That that's is right. not for you. Yeah. So I think the other thing to re remember is that if you know that on the best chance you have got a one in five chance of someone inviting you in for an interview through your resume submission, why would you put all your energy there? Yes. Yes. It just so doesn't true. make any sense to put your energy there. Yeah. Another way to look at this. Well, I'll tell you why. Because when you sit there yeah. for hours in a day and you apply online, you feel productive. You do. You That's feel right. like you're really doing something. And then when you don't get a call back and you don't get any movement at all, and right. you've been doing this day after day after day, week after week, sometimes mm -hmm. month after month, you're starting to feel deflated and defeated by the whole process. Mm -hmm. And it's not really your fault because you didn't know better. That's and right. so as my Angela says, when we know better, we do better, right? Yep. And so we have to do better for ourselves and recognize that doing that, although it feels productive, although it feels like you're doing mm -hmm. something, is not going to work for you and our audience. That's right. And, and again, it's not going to work for most people and most audiences. Mm -hmm. Another thing to consider, and again, who's depending on whose numbers you believe, 
anywhere from 4 at 30 to 50 60 percent of jobs are never posted right they are filled before they're posted right now they may still be posted because companies need to comply with the eeo regulations but we've seen many some of our own students mm -hmm. have been the person yeah who've been brought in for the job and they're brought in temporarily while they're putting the job posting out like and you're, you're going to get the job kelly we just have to do this go through this formality of posting it online yeah so all of the other kellys are out there getting excited and thinking this writing is my resumes job and, doing and this is what i'm going to do and not even yeah. getting in yeah but then even more are just never posted because the person inserts themselves into the process. So before we knew we needed an operations manager, yes. we had the need for an operations manager. Yeah. And it wasn't until a student in a cohort in 2020 showed us how we really weren't Optimized. being as efficient. We weren't optimizing. We weren't as efficient as we could be. And it was affecting our user experience. Mm -hmm. We hired in a heartbeat. Yeah. Now, if she hadn't inserted herself in the process, eventually we would have posted a job right. once and we it figured it out. Long time That's right. To get there. So your job as a candidate is to focus on getting in front of the job application whenever you can, mm -hmm. and at the very least, getting into the process in a way that's not algorithmic, in a way that's a human to human. Yeah. I just want to say one more yeah. that um, you usually mention. It's that sometimes a company is looking to look like they are robust, yeah. that they're growing, that they're, yeah. you know, in a really great yeah. financial position. So they will post jobs yeah. to make it look to the outside Exactly. Yeah. I mean, if you're looking to be acquired or to acquire someone or to scale or to look look like you're having a good quarter for your investors, you could post jobs. It happens all the time to make it look like things are growing. I mentioned earlier, you might be doing it because you already have the job filled, but you've got to follow the rules and post the job. Yep. And then sometimes companies will post jobs because they have the feeling right. that they may land that big account in six months. So they'd like to just have a bunch of candidates yep. in the queue just in case. I mean, there are so many reasons other than I have a job I need to fill Yes, that would make an employer put a job posting out there. So there are just so many reasons for you not to spend your right. time. So now that we've made our yeah. case for why you are not applying online, right. let's tell you what you're going to do. You're going to network. Yeah. So assuming that you are very clear on what you want to do, because that's important, knowing what your brand is. Yep. And you're very clear on your audience. You know where your brand fits and you know what pain point or problem you can solve with your skills. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to network with people. You don't necessarily have to network with people in that industry. Even. Right. You can network with people who might have connections in that industry. Talk to people who just know a lot of people. Right. But make sure you're very clear on, I am a product manager mm -hmm. and my, my sweet spot is consumer packaged products. That's where I really shine. And I'm looking to get into any organization that makes a consumer product. So it could be a big CPG company. It could be a local manufacturer that just started a product. Yep. And I'm looking to talk to anyone in that space. Who do you know? Mm -hmm. That could be one way to do it. Another way would be to kind of make a list of these are the people, the companies that I'm targeting and then look in their LinkedIn profiles and see who do I know who works there? Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. Or another place to look, college alum. Mm -hmm. Go to your alumni page on your, at your uh, college or university, undergrad or grad school, and type in the name of the company. See who pops up as maybe working there or having worked there. Yeah. You will have fewer daily activities because this is the this is a longer you're process. A long game. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're going to be doing some research. You're going to be trying to reach out to people. Whereas, as Kelly said, there's that satisfaction of, okay, good. I wrote a cover productive letter, I, I hit send, mm -hmm. and I feel productive, but it's not going to yield results. Mm -hmm. So, Suze, once you've you've done this, using that search engine more as a tool versus yes. as, yes. you know, something that you're applying through, um, you've talked with somebody, you've made that connection. Yep. When you actually do have to apply, you should be applying through the company website, correct? It depends. Okay. I mean, yeah, definitely you're better off if the job is posted on the company website to go directly through them than to go through an Indeed. Okay. Um, but very often, even if like I reach out to you, we went to the same college, you're saying, absolutely, Susan, I'm going to make sure HR knows about you or the yeah. hiring manager knows about you. I still have to apply online because I need to be in the in database. The system. Yeah, yeah, the system. Yeah. So in a cover letter, I would mention you. Okay. If there's no room for a cover letter, write one anyway. Yeah. Because it shows a level of interest and then just attach it as the first page of your resume. This will set you apart. Because if you take the time to do that, I know that you're genuinely interested and you're not just applying en masse. Yeah. Okay. And, and then you're also letting the person know 
that you I spoke with Kelly, right? Yes. That's going to be right in the cover letter. Yep. And I think we glossed over this a little bit, but the real value in this in the search engine isn't the job posting. Right. It's getting information. Yes. So looking at how are job descriptions written for product managers in 2024? What language is being used? Right. What are some of the key skills they need? A caution here, though. Mm -hmm. Men will apply for jobs that where they meet you know, 40-50% of the criteria, mm -hmm. and women only when they meet 90 or more. Now, you're not going to be applying, hopefully, because we've told you not to, but you still may feel when you're just doing this information gathering, well, why am I bothering? Yeah. Like, I, I can't I'll, be, you I'll, know, I don't, I don't fulfill half of these. Well, if I'm not networking with somebody when I am right, not at 90% right. of what this job, and, and really, right. let's give a little education around writing of a job description. They're looking for everything. Right? Now, because they can, but they're doing it preemptively because when you post a job, as an employer, mm -hmm. you could get 5,000 applications. Mm -hmm. So if I put in that, you know, you need to speak Russian, I'm going to eliminate a lot of those people. Do you really need to speak Russian? No, but it would be a nice to have it. Now that 1,000 or 5,000 is going to maybe get down to, you know, eight, 800. Right. And that's a more manageable number. So there is a little bit of, uh, like hunting and pecking as you're looking through these job descriptions right. of what do I think is really necessary? Yeah. What sounds like it's unnecessary? So for example, if there is a foreign language listed, but you know that 90% of their business is domestic and the job is domestic, well, maybe that doesn't have to be a box that you check. Okay. So, so yeah. There you have it. It's a lot. Uh, it's, well, the title was which search engines should moms be using, but the reality is you should be your no. own search engine. That's you exactly should be your right. own search engine. So if you liked what you heard today, you can like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you want to learn more about us and our programming, you can visit us at www.preparetolaunchyou, the letter U, dot com.